Learning with Leanne. Today's narration is by Leandra. Tangled, Ghosts of Christmas Past. It should have been a joyous time. Christmas was coming. Rapunzel's very first Christmas since returning home to the castle. She had spent every Christmas locked away in Mother Gothel's tower since she was a baby. The castle halls were decked with boughs of holly. The butlers had just chosen the royal Christmas tree. Everyone did their best to spread holiday cheer. Even the crankiest town folks were merry. But in the royal family, one person was not ready for a happy holiday. No way, uh-uh, said Rapunzel. I refuse to celebrate Christmas. What, cried Flynn. Why don't you want to celebrate the most wonderful holiday of the year? Rapunzel looked shocked. Wonderful, she said. I think you mean terrifying? Flynn was confused until Rapunzel shared her memories of Christmases spent in Mother Gothel's tower. You know how it is, Rapunzel said. There's all that eerie Christmas music. Mother Gothel sang it nonstop at Christmas time. I hate chanting and growling. That didn't sound like any Christmas music Flynn had ever heard. But he let Rapunzel continue. Mother Gothel also told us the tale of Nicholas, the ghostly Christmas elf, how he creeps into children's rooms on Christmas Eve and steals them away. It kept me up at bedtime. Rapunzel sighed and shrugged. But I guess that's why all the kids have trouble sleeping on Christmas Eve. Actually, no, Flynn said. That's not what Christmas is like at all. It was clear to Flynn. Mother Gothel had made Christmas sound frightening on purpose. It was just another way she had tried to make Rapunzel afraid of the world outside of her tower. He smiled, taking Rapunzel by the hand. You know what, he said. I'll show you what Christmas is really like. Come on. Flynn took Rapunzel outside the castle. She seemed unsure and a little skittish, but Flynn reassured her. Just look around and listen, he said. Does it seem like a spooky holiday to you? They passed a group of children singing Christmas carols. The sound was sweet and soothing. The words were all about hope and joy. It was like no Christmas music Rapunzel had ever heard before. Just then, a small boy ran up to Rapunzel. He held out a package wrapped with a bow. Merry Christmas, Princess Rapunzel, he said. I made this for you. But Rapunzel didn't take the gift. Her eyes widened in alarm. Trick package, duck, she cried, diving for cover behind the low stone wall. She peeked out warily from her hiding place. Finn and the children stared at her in disbelief. It's not a trick, Flynn said, just a gift. He opened the box. Inside was a hand-woven crown of evergreens. Slowly, Rapunzel walked over to him and took the crown. She placed it on her head. A real Christmas gift, she said, as if she hadn't heard of such a thing. Not an exploding trick package? She knelt by the little boy and took his hands in hers. Thank you so much. Next, Flynn and Rapunzel came across a tree trimming party. Together, the town folks were decorating an enormous Christmas tree in the center of the town square. Rapunzel pointed towards the top of the tree. You need a lot more charms up there, she advised, if you want to scare off the ghostly Christmas elf. She picked up one of the ornaments. And I'm not sure these charms are anywhere near scary enough. Flynn took her aside. They're not charms, he explained. They're ornaments for decoration. Rapunzel looked confused. Oh, well then, how do you creep the Christmas elf away? Flynn couldn't help but laughing. Okay, next lesson. They went back inside the castle where Flynn read to Rapunzel from several books about St. Nicholas. Oh, we had this one at the orphanage, Flynn said, holding up a red and green book. See, St. Nicholas isn't a ghostly Christmas elf. He's a jolly old fellow who travels far and wide on Christmas Eve, bringing gifts to all the boys and girls. Flynn showed Rapunzel drawings of a smiling bearded man carrying a sack full of presents. Definitely no kidnapping. Rapunzel and Paschal looked at each other, marveling at the idea. And to think, all of those Christmas Eve they'd spend huddled together by the fire, too afraid to sleep. You mean, children have trouble sleeping on Christmas Eve because they're excited? 
she asked. Flynn nodded. That's right, he said. So now that you know what Christmas is really like, do you think you might be interested in celebrating it this year? For real? For the first time? Rapunzel's face lit up. Yes, she replied, and she sprang into action. For weeks, Rapunzel lived and breathed Christmas, enjoying everything that the holiday season had to offer, everything she had missed out on while living in the tower. In the castle kitchen, she helped bake dozens and dozens of Christmas cookies. She learned every word of every Christmas carol she'd ever heard before. She decked every undecked inch of hall with garland and ribbon, and for the first time, she made beautiful, not spooky, Christmas ornaments. Finally, she wrapped handmade gifts for each member of her family. She could hardly wait until Christmas to see them open. By the time Christmas Eve arrived, Rapunzel was exhausted, but very, very happy. Her family gathered to celebrate around their Christmas tree. Rapunzel's father, the king, proposed a toast. For years, our hearts have not felt whole at this time of year because an important part of them was missing. He smiled at Rapunzel. The queen raised her glass and added, but now for the first time, since you were born, Rapunzel, the holiday is a joyful one for all of us. Rapunzel couldn't agree more. Surrounded by her warm, loving family in front of the crackling fire, she could not imagine a better Christmas. Rapunzel sighed happily and flopped down next to Flynn on a cozy settee. Thank you for all of this, she said. I should really be thanking you, Flynn admitted. You know, this is my first Christmas with a real family. All those years in the orphanage, I knew what Christmas was supposed to be like, but it somehow never felt that merry until now. Flynn and Rapunzel sat together in front of the fire, waiting for Christmas to come. But before long, Rapunzel fell asleep. Flynn smiled. After all those spooky, sleepless Christmas Eves in the tower, Rapunzel had certainly earned a peaceful holiday. It had been a wonderful Christmas Eve, and there would be many more like it for years to come. The end. Remember to subscribe, like, and share.